Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our Rockoustics Outdoor Living Spaces webinar. I'm Taylor, and we're excited to have you all this morning. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go over some quick housekeeping items. Um, just so everybody knows, this webinar is being recorded, um, and we will distribute the recording to you um, when we're finished here. Um, we also encourage you to ask questions utilizing the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Jason and we'll get started. Thanks, Taylor. Um, and uh, thanks to Mike and Rick and Jim. It's our part of our team here on the call. Uh, Rick is going to be working the uh, the slides today. And, and I mean, sorry, Mike is working the slides today. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. You know, we're trying to do these uh, presentations uh, kind of every other month to really showcase some different product and highlights that we do have, but also offer some solutions that uh, that a lot of dealers are looking for right now. Uh, you want to hit the, the first slide, Mike? So, you know, we're obviously want to go through, you know, the introduction, what we're doing, the company a little bit, but also some trends we're seeing in the market. There's some new information that we think you're going to, that's going to be very useful for you to kind of help uh, plan out your scope of outdoor solutions for uh, the coming years. We think that this is a growing category. So we're going to touch on the trends, the outdoor amplifier, the OS440, which is a really popular amplifier for us some of the different outdoor solutions, uh, and then also uh, one of our amplifiers, the MCA 2004T, and then some customization features that we have available to us, uh, and just some different support stuff that we offer. So uh, next slide. By the way, if I'm talking fast, I'm just a sales guy, so I want to try to get give Mike as much time on the on the technical part and the key features that we have. So as as normal for us, we're, we're SoundTube is our commercial uh, brand. Phase Tech is our residential uh, solutions and Rock Acoustics is our outdoor solution. So we have really strong solutions that cater to all of our customers. And, and our, our theme essentially is a sound solution for every need. So if you're if you're working with a customer on a beautiful home, you can do their, their whole house, you can do their outdoor system. But then if they say, hey, I own a chain of 20 restaurants and they want to you know do a nice system there, guess what? We make products for that as well, too. So uh, next slide. Uh, really for the trends we saw, you know, after COVID or when COVID happened, people were like ready to get out. They, you know, if they could sit on their patio, they couldn't go anywhere, but if they could sit on the patio and, and grill out or have a cocktail or watch a game outside or, or, you know, have their kids play around while they're, they're enjoying the nicer weather, it was healthier for them. It was, it, 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 it was, it did them good. Uh, and so one of the things that we started seeing was people were doing more outdoor kitchens, uh, you know, cooking out, spending out more time outside. Uh, putting TVs out there. They started doing more landscaping. Um, and, and part of that was what else can we do? And they started looking at this. So, you know, part of that was improved sound solutions. They want a wider array of styles uh, for outdoor design. So, and that is expanding outside just beyond the pool and patio. People are now turning the side of their house into a little uh, patio courtyard area, you know, and, and they they're looking at ways they can spend as much time to maximize that real estate and footprint of their home. Uh, next slide. So sound is often often added in pools and spas are installed. You know, it, it's kind of funny. You see people who are putting a, a swimming pool in their home and they're spending 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollars on the pool. Sound is, in, is important to that. And a lot of pool and spa companies are starting to make sure that that goes with it. They can't put in a, a $80,000 pool without, you know, putting speakers around it. And, and that is, a lot of the solutions that we offer. So, you know, let's make sure that we're capturing that and you're capturing it with, with any integrator that or, or any pool and spa company, any construction company that are doing this because they want they want good sound out there. They don't want just a Bluetooth speaker that they set in the corner. They want something more elaborate, something that sounds more dynamic. So style and design is becoming more important in that. And the aesthetics uh, often overcomes price. And that's the big thing too. We want to help you be a part of the design process. So uh, we want to make your customers happy and offering better choices. Uh, next slide. So this came out, this is on CEPro.com. So we, we got this and please go to CEPro.com and pull this data. They This is something that, I, that we're sharing that they had on here that gives you some information of where the trends are when it comes to outdoor technology. So uh, part of this that they're looking at is 37% of, of companies expect to increase their price on outdoor installs in 2024. 33% uh, in, uh, increase the price point from 2022 to 2023, uh, but also a larger percentage of dealers anticipate growth in this category in 2024. And so this is a growth category. 
for every single integrator. So take a look at this data. This is very useful for you. And you know, right now, sometimes you see price erosion in different areas. This is nice to see a price growth uh, for a lot of customers. And, and homeowners are seeing the value in it, not just in homes, but also in commercial. Uh, next slide. So this is the OS 440 amplifier. It's our most popular amplifier being used in a lot of our outdoor applications. Uh, it, it's you, you, it's now available. We you know we are doing a lot more marketing with this, packaging it with our, our speakers. So uh, please hit the website and take a look at it after the call. As Taylor said, we are recording this, so we'll be able to share this uh, webinar with you in a video afterwards. Also, so if you're writing stuff down, you can take notes, but also you can come back and watch this later. Uh, next slide. Hey, Mike, there you go. All right, so I'll kind of take over from here. Uh, so kind of like Jason said, we're going to be talking a lot about our outdoor solutions today. Uh, it's This is really not meant to be a deep dive on the OS 440 specifically, but we are trying to highlight it as kind of the cornerstone of, of a lot of the things we offer as far as outdoor systems go. Uh, but we do also want to kind of spend some time on the different speaker options we have as well uh, and our MCA 2004T amplifier as well. Uh, so just to start off with the OS 440, so uh, we when we first released this, um, it was one of the first outdoor smart amplifiers on the market, if not the first. Uh, it can live entirely outside, uh, and, it, and it's just a great option for running a whole outdoor system. Um, they're used all the time outdoors. Uh, my parents actually have one in their own backyard uh, with speakers around the pool, so I, I get a lot of hands-on use with that there. Um, it's got quite a few features. Uh, it does 40 watts across four channels, or you can bridge it and do 80 watts into two channels. Uh, it's got analog inputs, optical input, it uh, can do Bluetooth, you can stream over Wi-Fi, uh, it can be set up as a Google Home Chromecast device, uh, you can group multiple OS 440s into different zones or group them in the same zone, things like that. So it's a really uh, robust and uh, flexible feature-rich amplifier. Uh, and, and one of the main things that makes it so special is how versatile the connectivity is. So it, it's really strong uh, with the ways you can actually connect to it with a source device. Uh, so you can stream to it through anything that can cast to a Chromecast device. Uh, so Spotify, uh, Tidal, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, uh, Google Music, those can all cast directly to it just like, it, like you would any other Google device. Um, beyond that, obviously, like I said, it's got Bluetooth. Uh, and then hardwired inputs as well. Uh, so what we're doing now, we started this probably in the beginning of the year, around January of 2024, we're including a quick connect guide in the box with the OS 440. And the reason for that is because we felt that uh, the OS 440 was kind of being overlooked as far as uh, the flexibility of its features go. So what we're doing on this card is we have four sections here on the right. Uh, and each one is a different method of connecting to the amp. So we've got setting up in Google Home and Chromecast, setting up Bluetooth, setting up the Wi-Fi direct mode, and then setting up a multi-zone or multi-device system. And each section is four steps or less. Uh, and the goal is we want to show how easy and how quick it is to connect to this thing. Uh, and then in the bottom right corner of each section, we've got a QR code so you can scan directly to it and watch a video for how to do that particular connection method. So... It's really just designed to be out of the box, easy to connect to and set up. Uh, it's quick, it, it's flexible. You can do all kinds of different things with it. So here on the front panel, uh, you see all of the hardwired inputs and the speaker outputs. So on the bottom left there, we've got the optical input, which is great for connecting to a TV. Um, a lot of outdoor systems, like Jason said, are outdoor kitchens and kind of lounge areas, uh, outdoor living rooms, that kind of thing. So you this can power your outdoor TV sound system. Uh, you can also connect to it through Bluetooth if you want uh, and take priority there and play music out, outdoors, things like that, where you don't want to just use the nice sound system for either the TV or the, the outdoor audio system. You can join them in, as one. Um, and then obviously it's real easy to connect to optical and the stereo RCAs. You just plug them in. Uh, and then with Bluetooth, there's a source button on there and you just click it until the LED lights up under Bluetooth and it's ready to pair. Uh, you open up your phone or your iPad or your whatever device, their Bluetooth settings, you see the amplifier and you connect directly to it. Uh, now, Wi-Fi networked mode is probably the most powerful mode that this, this amplifier offers. 
Uh, so what you can do in the Wi-Fi networked mode is set up the amplifier uh, as a Google Home Chromecast device, like I previously mentioned. Uh, once you do that, it actually will connect to your home uh, internet network, and that will allow the AMP to automatically download and, and install firmware updates as they're released. So that way we can support the product for much longer without having to do any kind of like hardwired uh, updates. We can just do over the air updates. You can also zone OS 440s really easily through the Google Home app. Uh, a lot of people are not super familiar with the Google Home app, but it, it's it's really robust in what it can do. You can group OS 440s with other Google devices in the same speaker group. You can have one OS 440 in each group. Uh, you can control it, volume and things like that directly through the app. Uh, you can cast to it through the app or just through whatever streaming app you want to use as well. Uh, this this is by far the most powerful mode we have on the, on the AMP. Uh, and like I said, you just cast directly to it. Um, if people are familiar with Spotify or uh, YouTube Music or Amazon Music, there's just a little button there that you can cast to any uh, compatible device and, and just in the click of about two buttons and it'll start playing whatever you're listening to. Uh, and then all kinds of apps, anything, anything that can cast to a Google device can cast to our OS 440. And along with the Google Home app, uh, we also have our own app called the MSE OS app. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, on a later slide, uh, but through that app, you can also configure it. So through Google Home, you configure the AMP within the system. And then through our app is kind of how you do individual AMP configuration. Uh, you can also configure a system through our app as well, but that's really where you where, where you would go to set the volume level uh, of the actual AMP. You can still control the volume level of your source device if you're casting to it. Uh, you can bridge it there and things like that. So here, gonna, here we're going to watch a quick video of exactly how easy it is to set this up as a Chromecast device. A lot of people are kind of turned off by that idea, just thinking that they don't want to have to deal with the Google Home thing and they just want to buy the amp, buy the amp and stream to it with Bluetooth or whatever that may be. But uh, we do just kind of want to highlight exactly how easy and quick it is to set this up in Google Home. So here we got no audio. Let's see if I can fix that. If we don't have audio, you can also touch just touch on it as the video is playing too. So, or did you lose your audio? No, I got it. I'm just gonna see if we can share the audio directly from here. Today we're going to go through a quick start setup. Got it now. Getting your OS yep. 440 online as a Wi-Fi amplifier. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and plug the AC power into our amplifier. As soon as you do, you will notice that the power light gives you a solid green, and the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth LED is yellow. That means the amp is booting. As soon as the amp boots, the Wi-Fi light will begin to flash green. For now. As it boots, we're going to go ahead and install our tri-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas by screwing them onto the amp, very secure and snug, so that we can get our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals. And we're also going to go ahead and wire a speaker in so that we can get sound. So we have these little terminal blocks, and if you can see on the amplifier, we have four channels open for us. Each channel has two speakers that are available for it. So right now, we're just going to wire one speaker to the left output, positive, negative. You have your speaker wires, you connect them in the appropriate terminals, and then you plug the terminal block in. Now that we have our speaker wired, we're going to go ahead and plug it into the amplifier, and you have successfully wired a speaker to this amp. Once we have everything physically connected to the amplifier, and the light is flashing green under the Wi-Fi LED, we're going to go ahead and open our Google Home app 
to set this device up as a Chromecasting device. Google Home will search for any Chromecast devices available on the network. We'll find one. We'll go ahead and tell it to start the setup process. It has found the MSE Audio OS 440, so we're going to go ahead and say yes, we want that to be the device that we hook up. We are now connected. When you hear that tone, that means that it has successfully paired and you're ready to go. You can choose whether to link your Google account to this or not. We're not going to do that for now. We're going to go ahead and name this device just Backyard Speaker. Tell it what Wi-Fi network we're connecting it to. We're connecting it to the first one here. Your home Wi-Fi network would be listed in there if you're doing this at home. Click Next. You might have to put your Wi-Fi password in at this point, depending on the security you have on your network. But for our devices here, we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to go ahead and connect it straight to the network without any security precautions. And we are now connected to the network. At this point, you can go ahead and it tells you what you've done. Just say we're going to continue. Backyard speaker is ready and we're done. So at this point, you can either access applications from within Google Home or you can exit out of Google Home and you don't ever have to come in here again. You can open up whatever your preferred method of streaming music may be, whether it's Spotify, Amazon Music. Or... So we're going to use Amazon Music and play a song. Go ahead and open your preferred streaming platform. Select whatever track you want to play. And you will see that there is always an option to cast. So when you're playing it normally, it's going to play through whatever your device is. But when you tell it to cast by selecting the appropriate device, which we've called Backyard Speaker, it will then link to that. This is Mike's favorite song. And you're done. <laughs> Kidding. Can't say it is, but so that that is just how easy it is to connect to uh, the AMP in, in Google Home and set it up. And then once you do that, uh, obviously you saw the part where he connected it uh, to the home internet network. And so that, that will download any future firmware updates as well to keep the AMP uh, running exactly how we want it to. So then we've got Wi-Fi direct mode. This one's a little bit different and and sometimes can be a little bit confusing to people. So the way this one works is your source device connects uh, directly to the AMP through a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so it's not connected to an internet network. It's just connected to the source device through Wi-Fi. So the, the main benefit of that is that you don't have the distance limitations that you do with Bluetooth. Uh, so it's great for, for when the source device is far from the, uh, the amplifier. Uh, you can stream through this method, you can stream content local to the source device uh, because there is no uh, internet connection during this me this uh, method. You can't stream from the internet, but if you have content downloaded or owned, uh, then that's, that's a great option. Okay, so now we would like to go over some of our audio solutions as far as speakers go. Um, obviously with the, what the Rockoustics brand, we've got the, the rock speakers. They're kind of the hallmark of the brand. Uh, but we also have our planter speakers. We've got landscape speakers, buried subwoofers, uh, and then some more, uh, some more unique products that we'll go into at the end there. Uh, on, in the sound tube line, we've got surface mount speakers and landscape speakers. Uh, and then for amplification, obviously we've got our OS 440, uh, we've got our MCA 2004T, which we'll kind of get into details a little bit later about how that can fit in with these outdoor installs. Uh, we've also got other amps like our Phasetech P335, which we actually hosted a webinar on uh, about a month ago. So we've got quite a few different options for our outdoor solutions. So the original rock speakers, like I said, are the hallmark of the brand. Uh, these are the ones that everyone recognizes. Um, there, there are quite a few companies on the market that do rock speakers now, but uh, I really don't think any of them are nearly as robust or durable as the ones that we that we offer. Um, they're, they're made here entirely in the U.S., 
Uh, so I'm in our office in Lenexa, Kansas right now and right across the parking lot, uh, they are casting new new speakers as we speak. So they are all built here in the US. Uh, they've got just a, an extremely durable build quality to them. Um, they they blend in great with outdoor landscaping and, and shrubbery and things like that. Uh, so you can really find a spot for them almost anywhere. We've got different colors and style options, uh, different sizes from five, six, and eight inch. Uh, we've got one model with a compression tweeter. So there, there's really something for, for any install with, with these rock speakers. Um, because they are uh, so durable, uh, they are fade and chip resistant. Uh, and that, and that's mainly due to the formula that we use to, to mold them. Uh, so rather than being painted, they are the same color throughout. Um, they're fully weatherproof. Uh, like I said, same color throughout. So if you do uh, crack it or nick it with a weed whacker, it probably won't even break, but if it does, it's the same color all the way through because the actual resin is colored. So it's not just a, a paint coat like there are on some of the plastic rock speakers on the market. Uh, they, we offer a 10-year warranty with these speakers, uh, which is pretty unheard of for an outdoor product like this. Um, there may be some competitors that do the same, but we're still uh, servicing and repairing rock speakers. Uh, just the other day, we got one that uh, supposedly was was 17 years old, was, was 17 years ago was when he purchased it. So these last a really long time. Uh, and, and we offer replacement parts for all of them. So you can rebuild them often uh, rather than completely replacing them. And then every rock speaker model uh, does have an option to purchase a transformer with it. So if you have a larger outdoor system or if you're kind of uh, stretching into a commercial install, uh, they all can be built with 70 volt transformers as well. We've also got a couple of rock subwoofers that we offer. Uh, we've got the one sub, which has an eight inch subwoofer and an eight inch passive radiator. Uh, and then we've got the dub sub, which is a dual voice coil sub. Uh, and it's, and it's designed to function as a sub sat system. So it actually has outputs for satellite speakers as well. We've got our planter speakers, and these are one of the more unique things we offer in the Rockoustics line uh, because they are real planters. Uh, we've got the Omni planter, uh, which is a six and a half inch coax design. The Omni Planter 8, which is an 8-inch coax design, and then the Square Root 6.5, which is another 6.5-inch coax. Uh, so like I said, the special thing about these, they are real planters. Uh, you can fill them with dirt and plants. You can water them. They have built-in weep holes, so you don't have to worry about them damaging the actual speaker inside. Uh, and then the same goes for these as the uh, rocks. They each can be purchased with an optional transformer as well. And then within these models, we also have what we call the sweet spot model, uh, which is a, uh, a dual tweeter design, which allows for a stereo reproduction from a single source. In our landscape speaker line, uh, we've got three different subwoofers and two satellite speakers. So we've got our Periscape 4 and our Periscape 6 on the left there, uh, a 4-inch and a 6-inch satellite, respectively. And then we've got our Subscape 8, 10, and 12, uh, which are all designed to be buried, and just that top vent cap there is what is exposed. Uh, they All five of these uh, have an 8-ohm direct option and have a built-in 70-volt transformer. So these ones are not an optional transformer. They just come that way standard. Uh, so like I said, these are great for those larger, larger systems uh, or commercial systems. And then here we've got our music garden system. This is kind of a, a little bit more of an unknown system to a lot of people, I think. Uh, at first glance, it looks like four Periscape 4 speakers and a Subscape 8 speaker um, subwoofer, but that's actually not quite what it is. They are the same form factor as the Subscape 8 and the Periscape 4, uh, but there, there is an interesting little twist on them. So the, the satellite speakers are actually what we call the MG4. And the subwoofer is what we call the sub eight. So the main difference with these is that neither of them have a built-in transformer. And then the satellite speakers are actually 16 ohm speakers. And I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, and then the subwoofer is a dual voice coil sub, uh, whereas the regular subscape eight is not a dual voice coil. It's just a single voice coil. So this is a great system for just a, a small residential system. I mean, four satellite speakers and an eight inch sub, uh, it, it's, it's packaged together, it's easy to set up, uh, and, and there's a, a pretty unique uh, feature about it that we'll get into right about now. 
So the music garden was designed specifically to pair with our OS 440. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is that the satellite speakers are 16 ohms rather than eight ohms like the Periscope 4. Uh, and so the reason for that is so that you can run two of them in parallel off the left channel of the OS 440, two of them in parallel off the right channel of the OS 440. So now you've got an eight ohm load on each channel and then you run one, each of those channels to one of the coils on the sub eight subwoofer. So then you hit a four ohm load, you put the amp in bridged mode and you've got a perfect little system right there. So. Uh, we try not to get too technical in these webinars, so this is about the extent that we'll go as far as how this is wired, uh, but you've got your left channel there, you daisy chain the two satellites together, and then in the left input on the sub-8, you've got your right channel, you daisy chain your two satellites there and go in the right input on the sub-8 as well. Now we go. Now we've got the Cherry Bomb. Uh, so this is one of our, I believe it's our best-selling outdoor product. Um, it kind of revolutionized uh, the way that we think about speakers these days. Um, for those of you more familiar with our commercial products, this directly led to the uh, to the Mighty Might. It was kind of our inspiration for that. Um, they're essentially the same concept uh, with the built-in subwoofer. Uh, but the Cherry Bomb is a patented three-way design. So on the top there, we've got uh, a, a four and a half inch coax satellite speaker in the bottom in the red enclosure is a five and a quarter dual chamber bandpass subwoofer. Uh, the satellite top can pivot up and down. So it's pretty flexible with uh, where you aim it. Uh, it goes down to about 42 Hertz, which is really great for a single speaker all in one package. Uh, not to mention that uh, it provides phase matched full range sound. Uh, you don't have to dig a giant hole for one of the subscape subwoofers or spend time uh, digging extra holes for things like that. Uh, and and just like the other uh, landscape speakers we offer, it does have a built in transformer. So you can wire it either 8 ohm or uh, 70 volt or 100 volt. Now, one of the more unique things we offer is our coconuts speaker. Uh, obviously it's in the name. It's meant to look exactly like a coconut. You can hang it from a palm tree. You can hang it from, uh, just any kind of tree you want. Although the palm trees probably make the most sense. Uh, they're a five and a quarter inch coax speaker. Uh, and they are actually cast with the exact same, um, marble and rock infused resin as our rock speakers. So they're really durable. Uh, they'll hold up a long time since they are directly outdoors and exposed to the elements. So here we've got our monument series. So we previously teased these uh, a little while back. Uh, and what we're going for here is kind of a new uh, modern look on some of our rock speakers. As you can see, we've got our block rock here. This will be the first one that we release. Uh, and the goal with these is to have uh, a new look that's a little bit different than the classic rock speakers we've been doing. So the form factor is quite a bit different. Uh, there are going to be some new colors. So we've got marble on the left there and then slate in the middle. Um, so keep an eye out. Those will be coming sooner than you think, I would say. Um, they're not quite ready yet, but uh, we are really excited to see what, what we can do with these as they're kind of a new category within the Rockoustics speakers. Uh, and, and I didn't mention, they are omnidirectional, uh, the block rocks here. So uh, we will be coming out with a couple other models as well, but we're just starting with the block rock. Uh, and like the coconuts, they're made with the exact same resin that the rock speakers are made with. So they're just as durable as, as the other ones you've come to know uh, from our main US here. Uh, within the sound tube line, we've got some outdoor solutions as well. Uh, so we've got surface mount speakers. On the left, we've got our little three inch uh, SM31. Uh, and then on the right, we've got our SM82 surface mount speakers. So the, these speakers are weatherproof. Um, they can live outdoors just like the Rockoustics lines can. Uh, in our EZ line, we've got the SM31, the SM52, and the SM82, which are 3-inch, 5-inch, and 8-inch service mount speakers, uh, respectively. And then in our uh, I-series, we've got the SM400, 500, 590, and 890. So those are a 4-inch, two 5-inches, and an 8-inch. And then the SM590 and SM890 are the uh, high powered versions essentially. And those have a little bit different of a form factor, um, but si similar family sound within the die series.
Uh, we've also got several landscape speakers, the X-T550 and X-T850, uh, the new X-T850 uh, LED, which has the, uh, the LED lights for landscape or path lighting, and then our X-T850 sub. Uh, these are not used quite so much in residential, but for smaller commercial projects or large commercial, commercial projects, they get used fairly often. Uh, and then another unique thing that uh, we released uh, just about two years ago is our designer sleeve, uh, which is a, kind of a more aesthetically pleasing look uh, for a pendant speaker. And so this is a great option for like outdoor kitchens or patios, uh, things where it's like a covered porch outdoors, uh, pool houses, things like that. Uh, so they come in three different styles, the the cylinder, the tapered sleeve, and the cylinder actually has two different variations. Uh, they come in black, white, or silver. So now I want to talk pretty quickly about our MCA 2004T amplifier and kind of where that fits in here with our outdoor solutions. Uh, so generally, this will be for jobs larger than what the OS440 can handle, uh, at least a single OS440. Um, so it's it's great for medium to large residential projects or small to medium commercial jobs. Uh, at, just on its own, a single amplifier can handle quite a few speakers. Um, something unique about it is that it does four channels at 200 watts each. Um, and it can fully power all four channels uh, concurrently. And it's, and it's four separate inputs as well, so you can zone this very easily. Uh, it's got a pretty unique subwoofer mode, so if you need to run two of the channels at 70 volts or maybe 8 ohms for, say, your satellite speakers, then you can put uh, channel 1 and 2 in sub mode and run your subs off those. So that way you don't have to run those in 70 volts. Uh, it's great for indoor and outdoor systems uh, because there are four output channels. Maybe you could have two of them running your indoor system, two running your outdoor system, things like that. Uh, now we quickly want to highlight the Made in USA aspect of our Rockoustics line. Um, we went over this a little bit, but all of the rock speakers are made here in our Lenexa factory. Uh, same goes for the planter speakers. Uh, the Monument series will be made here entirely. The coconuts are made here. The only Rockoustics products that are not made here in the U.S. are our Landscape series, the uh, Escape series. Um, we also do have a factory down in Florida, uh, in, our ja in Jacksonville, our primary factory. That's where all of our Made in USA phase tech stuff is done. And we uh, build our own crossovers, wine coils, all that. We, we've talked about all the good Made in USA stuff several times on these webinars. Uh, so customization is a pretty unique aspect of the Rockoustics line. Uh, because everything is made here in the USA, we have uh, pretty tight control over what we can do with these. Uh, so we can get really flexible with colors and form factors and styles and things like that. Um, we offer custom color rocks and rock walls. Uh, we can color match if you have uh, like river rock or landscaping rock and, or some uh, rock that you want us to match the color to, you can send us a sample of it and we will um, mix up the resin uh, exactly like that and cast a rock in the exact color that you're looking for. So these are some colors that we don't offer as our standard uh, gray or sandstone. Uh, this one in the center here is what we call Key West White and we actually uh, made up several of those for a customer in Key West, Florida, just in the last month or so. So we can get pretty creative with the different colors we cast the rocks in. Uh, and then a pretty unique thing about the rock walls is we can actually build speakers into wall features. Uh, so here, this is actually an indoor living area, and you can hardly even see it, but there are there is a woofer and a tweeter built into that wall right there. Um, we also offer rock walls for uh, outdoor systems as well. Uh, about a year ago, we put in seven custom rock walls into a uh, kind of like a rock feature around a pool. So they they blend in great, even better than the classic uh, rocks do. And then finally, I just want to, as always, talk about our engineering support and what we provide. Uh, we, we offer complimentary ease layouts, which generally are going to be more for commercial commercial projects, but we, we can do the same same concept for residential stuff as well. Um, we're always happy to help lay out a system or suggest speaker placement. Uh, we can do it with or without drawings. We do prefer if you have drawings, but if all you have is a, this is a sketch on the back of a napkin, that works too. So any kind of request you have, uh, whether it's just, hey, here's what I'm thinking, does this look good? Or, hey, I have no idea where to start, can you help me out? Uh, we're happy to help with that. 
uh, just send it to engineering at MSE audio, and we will be happy to help you out with that. And that brings us to the end of our webinar. So if there are uh, any questions, feel free to uh, type them into the Q&A at th this time, and we will uh, get them answered for you. Thank you, Mike. You know, we did have uh, one question came up about uh, the uh, OS 440 being able to where you could kind of break off the channels and, and send different information to them. And I, I think that's actually a great idea. But I think uh, right now with that amp, obviously the OS 440 can either be done at 40 times four or 80 times two, you obviously bridging that. So in that, in that situation, I don't think we could, would have that capability of doing that, but that is a great input uh, that we'll definitely consider maybe as we expand uh, our amplifier solutions. Other questions? The MCA 2004 will do that though. Those are four discrete channels if you want to feed them that way. Ah. Good point. It, the big thing that we want to try to do here with everybody, and, and, and I'll, I'll, you know, if any anybody has any other questions, please type it in here. But I, I wanted to to stress that why we're doing these webinars is we want to help you be a part of that design process with your customers. Um, you know, when when you show, when you see the coconuts, it's funny. We were showing pictures out yesterday at this tech summit. People smile when they see that. They love that. They light up. And you know, there's an enthusiasm when you can give a choice of styles and designs to a customer. And, you know, we, we have to cater to, to, you know, the, the, the family that wants, you know, different things in their yard and not everybody wants the same, they don't want the same gray rock. Maybe they don't, you know, maybe they want landscape, maybe they want a planter, maybe they want a planter in terracotta, or maybe they want uh, the coconuts. It's just, there's a lot of different solutions. And and that's why we're doing the block rock. There's, there's a lot of things that we see growing in this category. And as you see the numbers, that people are spending more money in that. And, and uh, you know, if they're going to spend seventy, eighty thousand dollars on a, on a swimming pool, they'll spend a lot of money on, on the audio to go with that and, and tie it in with all the other stuff that you're putting out there. So we're here to help you out. Anything that you need. Uh, did we have another question? Uh, supply chain. Mike, you want to address that? Yeah. So a lot of the rock orders are, uh, made here in the USA are built to order. Uh, we are working to build up stock because we do understand that right around this time, I mean, spring just started. Uh, now is the time to kind of get ahead for those uh, spring and summer installs. Uh, so we are working to get stock built up. Um, I don't want to give an exact lead time on on what, what we expect these days. Um, I think in the past we had suggested like one to two weeks for rock orders. Um, but like I said, we are working to build up stock so that we no longer have that issue. And, and by the way, if you if you have projects that you're doing, I mean, we we have inventory on a lot of our products in stock. And that's the thing is with us is, is we're not waiting six weeks for our boat uh, to come in uh, from from overseas on our rock products. So availability is much better there. Um, but demand is also good, good and strong too. And, and, and our, our demand is actually growing. So one of the things we're doing is we're increasing our inventory. We're actually bringing in more teams here. Uh, to build more speakers in our facility, so we 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 plan to expand and grow in on that. So if you if you sell a product, if if we if we don't have it in our in our supply channel already, it might be one week, maybe two weeks at the most. But the good news is you're not waiting eight to ten weeks for a product uh, if if we don't have it in stock. It's it's very little time on on the wait time. Uh, custom rocks, yeah, it's, it's it is a couple weeks. Uh, you know, maybe three. Tell your customer three weeks just in case. All right. Anything else? We want to thank you. Uh, Taylor is, uh, as she said, recording this, and we'll we'll be emailing out uh, the presentation to you so you'll have access to it. And uh, hit us at at, uh, at our website, msceaudio.com. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.